God's grace and peace and welcome to you all. Well, here we are after a very disorienting week. Um, from what was a few weeks ago, a church and congregation full of people and a gathering together, and now gathering for church in a very different way in a very different time. But you know, even though we've never gathered together as church like this, everything that is of church is here. We are connected together with and for one another and on behalf of our wider communities and world. And God is here as well. You know, as we've taken <laughs> this empty church and brought it right down to this very intimate space, we've brought the essentials of everything that is church that is here. A communion table and candles, a cross, and a Bible. And as we start church, you know, we light a candle every week because a candle, a light, is a sign of God's presence with us. And so we remember that today. And in these particular times that we are living in, I've been thinking about these two candles and how important it is for us as church to make space for two important elements of our lives these days. And one is to make the space for grief. This week has been full of dislocation and grief and sorrow of many kinds that we've known intimately and have also been known throughout our world. And it's important for us to make space and time for grief and the holding of all that leads to that of dislocation and sorrow and anger at times of fear and anxiety. We make a space to gather in our grief. We also make a space as well to gather as a community of hope, for that is our call as an Easter people, that out of death and out of darkness new life comes and indeed is already being born here. And so to make a space as well for the very communion and the holding and the love of God. And you know, it's out of making a space for grief and out of making a space for hope, both, that the work of healing comes. And so let us gather today, now church, in our scattered places, but in this one place for this is indeed a holy gathering and a holy meeting. And God, God, you are here. Will you join me in prayer? Holy God, in all of the dislocation and disorientation of these days, May these time and this moments together be a time when we can be regrounded in you, reoriented to look up and see your love and face with us and all around. And God, yes, in these hard days, refashion us into your Easter people that can sing of your presence, your love, your grace, and your joy. In Christ's name, amen. A few weeks ago, I had dinner with Alice and Andy Much, and Andy loaned me a copy of his grandfather's Bible that was written, in fact, by a friend of his grandfather, James Moffat. 
This book first came out in 1922. And I think about all of the hands and stories that this Bible uh, has been passed down into. And it's from this Bible that I wanted to read this morning's uh, scripture lesson. It's the season of Lent, those 40 days of preparation before Easter Sunday. And the theme in our church for Lent has been all about listening and listening for the presence of God. Our story this morning is rooted in a story that um, those of us who've been listening in or here at church for the past six, seven weeks have, uh, have heard before. Um, it comes right after the story. The story that I've been uh, sharing in church is the story of that interim time, which some of us are remembering, Jesus and disciples stepping out of their familiar home, going across a lake, they don't know why, in the middle of the lake, fear and trembling, Jesus, peace be still, and the storm is stilled, and then getting to the other side of the lake. Well, this story comes after they have left that other side of the lake and are now returned to home. But everything about home is different, as everything in our lives and homes has been different in this past week. It's a scripture not just for a time long ago, but a scripture that is so applicable to our time and the witness of a woman who shows us how to live in times like these. Now, when Jesus had crossed in the boat to the other side again, a large crowd gathered around him, so he remained beside the sea. And a president of the synagogue called Jairus came up and on catching sight of Jesus, fell at his feast with earnest entreaties. My little girl is dying, he said. Do come and lay your hands on her that she may recover and live. So Jesus went away with Jairus. Now a large crowd followed Jesus and they pressed around him. And there was a woman who had had a hemorrhage for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under a number of doctors and had spent all her means, but was none the better. In fact, she was rather worse. She'd heard about Jesus, got up behind him in the crowd, and touched his robe. If I can touch even his clothes, she said to herself, I will recover. And at once... The hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was cured of her complaint. Jesus was at once conscious that some power had passed from him, so he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? But he kept looking around to see who had done it. And the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came forward in fear and trembling and fell down before him, telling Jesus all the truth. And Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be free from your complaint. You know, in times like ours and in times that none of us in this particular way have ever lived through before, we need the witness of people who have shown us how to live through times of fear and anxiety, have lifted up their eyes to see hope and Jesus before them, and have found their way to healing. 
the story of the woman from the Gospel of Mark shows us such a way to move from this to this and to this. Will you pray with me? God, in these days, thank you for the witnesses of those who have taught and teach us how to walk through trying days. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts always be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. Well, it has been a disorienting week um, for all of us. <laughs> and it's been disorienting in all the particular ways that we could speak of. It's parents uh, at home with children all day and trying to figure out managing work and schooling at the same time. It's seniors in high school grieving not being able to do some of those rituals of a senior year. It's seniors in the nursing home. It's people in isolation. It is people learning to connect in new ways. We all have our stories. I've told many people this week, you know, this is the kind of day you could pick up the phone and call anybody around the world <laughs> and say, how are you doing in this particular disorientation? We all have our stories. And we're united in the fact that none of us know how to live through these days. We're all doing our best. And we will find our way through well, I love the story of the woman with the hemorrhage of 12 years who in the middle of a story, in the middle of everything going on, reaches out and does something. And she shows us perhaps how to be ourselves. The first thing I love about this woman is that she knows who she is. She knows she's not well. She doesn't try to pretend that she's well or everything is fine. She knows that she's been suffering for a long time and for 12 years. She's been trying to find healing and none of the doctors can heal her. You might do this with me <laughs> at home this morning. I've been doing a lot of this these past, uh, this past week and these past days. It's this place of feeling the grief and the sorrow and the disorientation of these days. It's this of looking out on an empty sanctuary and a place that's usually full of people. It's connecting with you in this strange and yet wondrous way that we can connect this morning. It's the particular sorrows of this week. On Friday, I drove over to see my parents. It's one of the strangest visits, of course, I've ever had with my parents. <laughs> Couldn't even go in. Talked uh, far away from each other. Just connected to make sure that they were okay and assuring them that I was as well, though disoriented, as we all are. We have to take time for this, to remember the grief and the sadness and the disorientation of these days, to feel the pain, to feel and be with the loss of it. The woman in our story today 
knew her pain. We take a moment and just remember our own. And a pain of a world and people with all of their particular stories and anxieties and fears. To walk through our pain, we have to. We have to make time to honor and remember our pain. It's been said that courage is not the absence of fear. No, it's not to wait for all the fears to go away, but it is to knowing that there is something bigger, greater, more than just our fear. Courage is not the absence of fear, but knowing that there's something bigger than it. The woman in our story today is a woman of incredible courage. She reaches out of her pain. She reaches out of everything that could make her feel and seem that was told to her that she was other. And she looks up. And she sees Jesus. She sees everything that we mean and can say when we say Jesus. <laughs> she sees presence. Presence of all that we call God. Presence of healing. Presence of power. Presence of strength and presence of grace. Presence of compassion and beauty and joy. She sees Jesus. And she does this. <laughs> she reaches out to touch Jesus. You know, that's a big move, to move from this to this, but I would just invite you to do that today as you're sitting there at home, to move from the remembering and the holding of our pain to this. What the woman in the story sees and knows is what we're invited to know in days like this, that Jesus is here. that everything of God is here. Holding, compassion, remembrance, grace, love, it's here. Can you feel it? <laughs> Can you feel it? Jesus recognizes that some power has gone out of him. He looks around to see where has that power gone? <laughs> the power has gone into her, <laughs> who is an instrument then that embodies that grace and presence, and power and love and beauty that is Christ. You know, we come from a people that say and are so bold to say that we are the body of Christ. Jesus is not somewhere back there sometime or out there somewhere. Jesus is right here in us, among us, between us, as we breathe, as we connect, as we are church in all that being church means with and for one another and on behalf of of our world, we are the body of Christ. And so body of Christ and so church, these are the days to honor our pain and to honor and to hold a space of the world's great pain. To reach out in the midst and to touch and make room for the love and the compassion of all that is God that is here. 
and to ask ourselves today, how are you? How am I? How are we called to be church today for the healing, for the healing of the world? You know, it's in times like this that, um, that songs are written. In the breath of a space like this, beautiful songs are written. And um, we're going to sing a song right now. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. You know, we come together um, to open up our hands into all that we call God and into our prayers today. It's one of the most important things we do as church. We come together with our joys and with our sorrows, with our thanksgivings and in our need. And so we gather today, making a space for prayer. And as we come for our prayers, I would... Um, I'd have us first start with this candle of, uh, of hope, of connection, of love, to look out and to see. Here in uh, Booth Bay Harbor, Maine, it is a beautiful day. And if you opened up your eyes or stepped out the door to just see this beautiful blue sky and, uh, and March day, I give thanks for all that are part of our community and our broader community today of the Congregational Church of Booth Bay Harbor. I wonder, looking back on your past week of dislocation, of difference, what's been a gift? What's been a gift of this week that you can give thanks for? Maybe some new connections made, a phone call made, knowing something, yes, of God's presence, of Christ's presence with us all. Thank you, God, for the gifts of hope and of life and connection and love. Just open our eyes and our hearts to see all that is here. Amen. And we also lift up a prayer and make space for, um, for our needs. And we are a people and a world in great need today. Yes. We have these particular prayers um, from our community, and, um, and we join to them our own. Um, our prayers of, um, of grief. Lois Glazer reached out this week, and... Uh, Lower, Lois's brother, Don, had Parkinson's disease and, um, and died this past week. He was doing well until a year ago, or two, she said, and he was so active his whole life, and he fought through it and continued on with life as usual for a long time. And his demise over the past year was heartbreaking, and his quality of life was gone. So his passing was a blessing, though premature, and we will miss him terribly, and the amazing memories will help sustain us. We remember Lois, her family, for all who were loved and blessed by Don's life, and God, we remember our own griefs, and together we pray. Amen. John Walkman offers prayers for
for the health of our country. We pray for Judy Dent, um, who has pneumonia. We pray for as uh, Gary and Pamela White ask prayers for their nephew, Paul, for all suffering from alcohol and drug addiction. We pray for those who've had surgeries um, delayed. Marion Coleman asked prayers for her son, Josh, who was sick with a respiratory illness. Bruce McDonald in the hospital this past week, and he's now home and um, said yesterday he's, he's doing fine, and he appreciates our prayers for his continued healing. Sue Goodrich shares news of her young friend, Addie, and for her continued healing. And so in these days, we pray in our need, God. And we pray and we give thanks in our joys and in our sorrows for all who are healing in our midst, especially for our doctors and nurses and caregivers, our housekeepers, everyone who works in hospitals and care centers throughout our country, community, and our world. We pray for parents at home with their kids, and we pray for you kids uh, as well, praying for our elders, praying for all of us, that all of us may find our way and place to be people of healing and hope. And together, let us join our prayers in the name of the one who shows us your face, God, and taught us to pray, Jesus the Christ, who prayed, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And every week we come together for an offering an offering a time to pause as a community and say, what can I offer for the healing of the world? And today, while no offering is being collected, we need your offerings as church. Your world needs our offerings of ourselves and our gifts more than ever. You can give to the ministry of the Congregational Church of Booth Bay Harbor by sending in a check for the ministries of this church which serve this wider community. You can go online to our church website and click on the button or on our Facebook site and give online as well. Your gifts will be used as a sign and song of healing and hope and strength for this community here and indeed communities throughout the world. And today on this Sunday is a day that churches throughout our country come together in a special offering called One Great Hour of Sharing. You can hear more about what One Great Hour of Sharing is doing um, on our website and Facebook page as well. But know this, our One Great Hour of Sharing offering brings the gifts of our wider church communities together so that we will be there as sign and presence of healing and hope, not only today, but in the needs of tomorrow. 
we can know that every time there's an earthquake or a flood or a fire, one great hour of share, of, of, of one great hour of sharing is there, and our gifts are there. You can give, and what an important time to give generously to our one great hour of sharing gifts, by again mailing in a check to the church, or going on our church website, and making an online gift. And finally, what about you and what about me? And how can we be instruments of healing in our world today? I'm grateful (laughs) that our congregation, scattered as we are, is relearning about being church, as indeed all of our religious communities are doing these days. I give thanks to 17 members here who said they would captain little boats, eight, ten of us, to check in, be church, care for, pray for each other in our scatteredness as we make our ways across these days together. They'll be reaching out to members of the community here this week to connect with them, and we'll be checking in each week. And if you want to make sure that you're part of that connecting, whether or not you're a member of this church community or not, please write a note to our church website or to our email, pastor at congochurchbbh.org, and we want to connect you. Let's make a moment just to pause before we move on to listen for how, God, are you calling us to offer our gifts and ourselves for the healing of your world. And as we conclude, every week we, um, we end with a blessing. We need a blessing today, and we need to be a people of blessing today. So I invite you, wherever you are, and just put down whatever's in your hands and just to open up your hands and to receive this blessing. May God grant you the grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for the sake of something good. Grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. And may that very love of God Be strong about within you and ever before you from this time forth and forever and evermore. Amen.